everyone. Uh, welcome to Miss Pat's Sunday School class at Ridgewood Baptist Church. Are we on, Mary? Okay. Uh, Miss Pat today is going to further unwrap uh, the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6. Uh, our lesson today is Give Us This Day Our Daily Bread. So, Miss Pat is here to share with us a word from God and unwrap further the Lord's Prayer. So, Miss Pat, okay, there you good go. Morning. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're doing it. Denny, Denny is watching. Good, good. Hey, uh, good morning. Brother Jim is with his, his wife in the hot. She's in the hospital in Jonesboro, so that's why Mary and Pam are helping me this morning. But we want to start off with having prayer for Miss Miss Denise. So, so let's go ahead and have prayer for Miss Denise. Yes, thank you. Father, we come to you asking you to reach down and touch Miss Denise, Lord. Help her to heal from this pneumonia and the other issues she has, Lord. We know you are the great physician, and we're asking you to reach down and touch her, Lord. Father, we thank you for her some improvement, Lord. We pray for Brother Jim as he dra travels back and forth, Lord. We just ask your grace and mercy with him. We ask this all in thy son's holy name. Amen. All right. Uh, I'm going to recap what we've already studied. Week one, we were studying our Father. And every child, every believer is a child of God. That is a personal relationship with our Heavenly Father. He wants us, wants to hear from us. And, he, and that's how we, we, when we pray, we talk to him or spend time with him in the Word. Week two was Hallowed Be Your Night Thy Name, and that begins in our heart. We have to respect, have reverence, and give glory and worship to God. And that requires a personal relationship. We can't do that if we don't have that personal sure, relationship. We, have, we are to continually grow and learn more about Him, and that makes our uh, relationship stronger. Week three, we studied thy kingdom come. The church purpose is to lead people to saving knowledge so they can escape hell and have a new home in heaven. God's kingdom comes when the unbelievers come to Christ for salvation. Satan is our enemy and does all he can to stop the growth in God's kingdom. Week four, we studied your will be done on earth as in heaven. God's will, not ours. You know, genuine, genuine prayer focuses on God's will, not ours. And many believers have a weak prayer life because they don't really believe God will answer prayer. They say a prayer and eh, if it's, he answers it, that's good. But they don't really believe he will. But God does hear and he does answer our prayers. But one thing we need to remember, it's in his time, not ours. And he has three ways of answering prayer is yes, no, or wait. Um, sin was no surprise to God. Evil and all its consequences was anticipated in God's eternal decree from the foundation of the world. God's will is that no one be separated from him. He gives us a choice, provides a way for us to come to him through, his pre through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And that was shed on the cross for every single person, but they have to come to him. Real benefit of prayer is not to change God, but to change you and me. Uh, pride is a major obstacle that needs to be, to be overcome before we can pray, thy will be done. And we are to pray faithfully and expectantly. All right, this week, how many, who do we have with us today? Do we have, who do we have with us today? We, you said Miss Denny was here. Oh, Miss Mary Ann Carter's watching. Miss Denny, uh, a lady, I just went out of it to correct something. A lady from Harrison, I don't know. Okay. April that. Bunch. Yeah, that's yes. her. That's her. Okay. okay. Jesse's right. here. Good. Good morning to each one of you and thank you. All right, today we're going to talk about give us our daily bread. I'm going to read the whole uh, prayer. Our pre Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Uh, I hope we corrected it. After focusing on our attention on our Heavenly Father, now Jesus shows us how to pray for our special needs in our life. And in this world, we need that. Uh, and this deals with man's needs, not God. But God is still involved. God is the one who gives us our daily bread. God is, is glorified by meeting our needs. provides nourishment in, in one to total dependence on God. We have exactly. physical needs. Right. We have physical needs and we also have spiritual needs. And God is the one that provides us and we need to realize that. We live in a world of sin that is pollutes our walk with Christ. But Jesus paid the penalty for our sins. The past, the present, and the future. We still sin and we need cleansing and protection things and God is always there. Nothing shows plainly our dependence upon God than this prayer that we have just read. We know God as a father is very important. We have to acknowledge our absolute dependence on God. And in Matthew 18, 1 4 it says at that time the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and that had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like the little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever ever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. All right. Who did Jesus say is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? The one who humbles himself like a little child. Right. Why was this true? Why is this true? That we have to humble ourselves as a little child. I I think it's because we have to acknowledge that he knows it all and that he is the one who is yes. in control Trouble and in right. charge and who is there, yeah. yeah. No one's above him. Right. 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 He is sovereign. Right. We're yeah. right behind now. Then. Okay. <laughs> we may have some come in here in a few minutes. I'll right. tell you if we do. All right. Uh, bread doesn't necessarily just refer to food. It refers to any physical need that we have. He provides whatever we need. Food, clothing, home, shelter. Uh, and all of this, the good weather we have, our family, our peace. the universe cares about supplying my physical need. That's wonderful when you stop and think. You know, how does that make you feel? That God cares about your physical needs? That is, that's awesome when you stop and think. That he does. He cares about every single part, every single thing that you're going through. He cares about you. And we need to realize that. We need to honor him. We need to read we need to recognize that every single good thing we have came from God. And so many people think, oh, I did this, I did that. It's God that provided for what you have. And that's what's important to remember. In, in uh, James 1 7, uh, here we go. Oh, I have a Oh, 117, I'm sorry. 
It said, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, and does not change like shifting shadows. So God doesn't change. He provides for us. If he provided for you in the past, he will do it in the future. And, and he does it now, and that's what we have to remember. Um, and he knows... Uh, Jesus has been here and been through right. some of the things, and so he knows how we feel That's it. when we're going through mm -hmm. something. And you know, stop and think how important that is, that mm -hmm. Jesus knows what we're feeling. Because sometimes you get you get to thinking, nobody cares, nobody's there, but we God knows, and he does care. And you know, we need to recognize that, and we need to be thankful for every single thing that we have. And we don't need to be boastful about, about it because we're, it's nothing, I mean, yes, we, you know, we do work and that's what we need to do, but, but God provided the provisions for that. And when all our needs are met, like I say, we tend to take credit for what we've done. I've already said that, but anyway, we work hard to earn money, to buy clothes and food and shelter and do all this, but really, it all comes to, down to God providing it. And we need to realize that. Uh, we owe it everything we have to God. And we need to be thankful. Uh, we owe our health, our life, our possessions, our talents, our opportunities all come down from resources that God has created and made available to you and me. So... You know, our daily bread, the necessities of physical life, all comes from God. God promised from the very beginning that he was going to provide for men, for us. In Genesis uh, 129, he said, Be, uh, 129. Then God said, I gave you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit, with seed in it, that they will be yours for food. God continued to, continues to provide an abundance of food for mankind. Food is, you know, we have, we have what we need. And, uh, you know, uh, people say, well, there's, there's people out there starving. Well, maybe they don't, we don't understand why that happens. But we still need to know that God is there. And a lot of times, you and I can help someone that needs food. So that's what we need to do. And stop and think, are you truly, truly thankful to God for the food that you have? You know, we bow our heads and we say a prayer before we eat. But is it really, do we really sincerely understand that that come down from God. Yes, you provide, you cooked it, you did all this, but the provisions come from God. And we, you know, sometimes we just, it's a habit to say a, pr a prayer before food instead of uh, being thankful. An attitude, if we're not thankful, the attitude reveals the sin of indifference and ingratitude for God's gift. We need to recognize that God alone is the solar sources of all our provisions and gives, give him the glory that he deserves. The heart of, of this, this petition, give us, give us this day our daily bread, is expressed in the word give because it recognizes the need of you and me. We recognize what we've done in the past, what he has done in the past, we'll do now, Trust you to do it in the future. God promised to provide people to supply abundance. In that abundance, we are to help others in need. <laughs> you having problems? We're trying to figure out how to hold the phone now. Oh. When we invest in God's kingdom, He not only supplies spiritual food, but also the bread or the physical food that we need. So we need to realize that and recognize it. God's physical provision is a biblical promise, but only to those who belong to him. 
For the righteousness, there is a promise. For the unrighteous, there is judgment. God commit, commits himself to meet the essential needs of his own people. Without a proper view of God, there cannot exist a proper view of man. Those who have the right view of God will have a right relationship to him through Jesus Christ. Matthew 6, 25, which is right below where we've been reading. It says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? So he's telling us, you know, don't worry about it. He'll take care of it. And we can trust him to do that. And then verse 32 says, uh, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about, for, about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So we are we trust him and we seek his kingdom, not ours. Sometimes God's provided for his children in miraculous means. You know, there's and but pr primary way is through work. You know, we he tells us that we are to work for our. You know, if we're not willing to work, then we should have the expected food. Um, and this April said, "Give him the glory and thank him for our blessings." Yes, yes, thank you. He gives us energy, resources, wisdom, and opportunities to work. God is always the source of our physical well-being. He makes earth produce what we need, and he gives us the, the ability to uh, harvest it so that we can use it. And so, you know, we are we're to accept his provisions and to for today and to quit worrying about tomorrow. And, you know, so many times we, we get hung up on tomorrow. What, what am I going to do tomorrow? What is, I need this for tomorrow. And he's telling us, don't worry about that. He's got it taken care of. He's going to provide for you and for me. And, you know, and we're not to be concerned. Now, it doesn't mean we're just to go flying away with throwing money around, but he's, you know, use wisdom. But uh, prayer focuses on God as the one who supplies Acknowledge that he is the one. It teaches us to live one day at a time in confidence. He will meet our needs. And that's what we have to do. And, you know, Jesus wants us to live in a constant state of dependence and gratitude in our prayers and our lives. Recognition and affirmation that every good thing we have comes from the hand of God graciously, so we are to always be thankful for his provisions and not be boastful or bragging about what we've done. God has promised to supply abundantly to whatever, you know, our needs, and we need to humbly be grateful for what we have, and we need to care for others by sharing what God has given to us. You know, go ahead. April says that Worry robs our peace. That's right. That's trust good. trust him and have peace. Right. That's very true. We do. We have to trust him. By trusting him, what are we acknowledging about God? He he knows he's in control and that's, he's sovereign. He's sovereign. Yeah. You know, we you know, he's in like you say, he's in control and and we have to Put that trust where it belongs. It's, it's in Him. He created everything. Mm -hmm. So He knows what we need and He provides what we need. Brian Ponder's on here now. Oh, really? He's, yeah. He was on here yeah. once before. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's been on. really sick. Yeah. So, thank you for that. so, anyway, well, that's about all I've got on today. We're a little bit short, but I didn't ask as many questions because we were mixed up. I hope that you were able to enjoy this and I hope that you will stop and think that. God takes care of you. God takes care of each one of us if we and he he loves to do that. And he's so thankful that we he is able to do that. He, he, he wants us to ask him 
-hmm. to give us our daily bread right give it you know to us. just basically acknowledge the fact that we know that everything we have comes from right. god right you know the our, our very lives much less our food shelter mm -hmm. clothing all our basic needs and most of the time our wants to be yeah. honest but, right uh you know just to acknowledge with gratitude and thanksgiving that he gives and he can take away at any second it's you it. know we have to realize that you know if it's like it said if we if we get too much and we deny him, then he could take it away. If we become self-sufficient, like, oh, I worked hard and I got that. Mm -hmm. You know, he gave us the ability and the help and everything right. else we need to even be able to work. And if Amen. we are too poor, and then it said that they might steal and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, repulse God. So, uh, you know, we just have to acknowledge him with thanksgiving and gratitude for everything we have. Right. And you know him. What we don't have. Right. Yeah, right. That's right. He, because he knows. He knows what we don't need. Yeah. Well, so I like to say, you know, uh, he knows what we need and that's what he provides. Yeah. And some things that we think we need, we don't need. Right. And, and later on, you'll find out, be thankful that he didn't answer that prayer. You yeah. Know, that he knew that it would not be good. He knows yeah. that light at the end of the tunnel may be another train coming <laughs> that we can't see. <laughs> you know, and he, right. you know we, he's, he knows what's best for us and he wants what's best for right. us. That's it. He wants what's mm -hmm. best for us. He delights in us and he mm -hmm. wants us to ask him right. for our blessings. You know, he's going to bless us anyway when mm -hmm. we're his children. But he wants us to ask him, right. just like we want our kids to mm -hmm. ask us. Why does he want gratitude? us to verbally ask him? You know, why? He already knows. Why does he want us to ask? Because that makes us dependent on him. Mm -hmm. It makes us acknowledge and we acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. We acknowledge that we need him and we yeah. need what we're asking for. That's it's not something that's just there. We're not just bouncing through the world right. and saying he's in charge. Right. Yeah, right. it's like uh, on one, one of the sentences in our lesson was realizing that God alone is the it's source of those provisions gives him glory. That's mm -hmm. it. And to me, that's the whole key. Right. It's right. the acknowledgement mm -hmm. that God alone is gives best. those provisions and right. that he, he he gives he can take away that's you it. know Very because he, he i mean that's that's when the test comes mm -hmm. we fail to acknowledge him then he may say okay <laughs> you know <laughs> let me remind you where right. your blessing to whom your blessing from whom your blessings right. flow and another thing i think is he expects us when we have abundance to share it not be greedy Absolutely. say i'm gonna hold on to this because i might need it later mm -hmm. it, there's people out there that need our help That's and right. we're to help them when we if we have extra you know mm -hmm. and so God is God is faithful and he loves us that's what we need to remember he yeah. loves us and he delights as, Mary, as Pam said he delights in giving us stuff and and blessing us mm -hmm. and we need to to recognize that and be thankful about it and let others know about what God has done for you and, and one other thing I want to add is like it's it said in, in Matthew 5, 6 and John 35, what should a believer's prayer mm -hmm. for hungry people in every nation of the world be? You know, and Christ's answer for that is that we hunger for and thirst for righteousness. Mm -hmm. You know, and if we hunger and thirst for righteousness, then he has promised that all of our needs will be met. You know, um, anyway. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, and we'll see you next week. Prayer. You want to close in prayer? Mm hmm. Yeah, we want to do this sure. first. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you, Lord, that you are sovereign, Lord, yes. and that you do provide every need that we could ever have, Lord. And you do it because you love us yes. and you delight in us, Lord. Uh, but, Lord, help us to ever be reminded that. We, we need to ask you to provide for us one day at a time, Lord, right. to acknowledge you as being sovereign and as being the one who provides every need in our life, the very air we breathe, 
uh, our very existence, Lord. We wouldn't even be here had it not been for you creating us, God. So just uh, help us to ever be mindful with gratitude and thanksgiving, Lord, that you are our great provider, God, and that you do give us each day what we need for that day, Lord. We don't have a promise of tomorrow, but we know that you hold tomorrow, Lord, in your hands, Lord, and we thank you for that, and we praise you and give you honor and glory. Lord, uh, again, we lift up our sister, Miss Denise, Lord, and we just pray for your healing hand on her. We pray that you would just completely heal her body, Lord, uh, and just bring her back to us, Lord. We pray for Brother Jim as he cares for her and supports her and comforts her. God, just put your arms around them and just help them to feel your love and your, your that they're not alone, Lord. You're right there with them and that they're in our prayers and we love them so much and, and we can't wait to have them right back here with us, Lord. And uh, Lord, we just thank you. We give you honor, praise, and glory for who you are and what you've already done and what you're going to do for us in the future. We thank you with gratitude, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. See you next week.